Hi everyone, I'm Yasmin and today I'll be talking about the chemistry extended essay. So, what is the extended essay to start with? So, the extended essay is um, a mandatory part of um, your IB diploma. Um, it's a 4,000 word essay that you write in any subject really and you get to choose whatever subject you want to write it in. Um, so it is basically an extensive piece of academic research. Um, you need to conduct some kind of study, some kind of research, and you need to report the findings of those research in the right um, academic way and academic writing style. So in summary, this is what the extended essay is. So for chemistry, there are many, many, I mean, not many, there are three ways to go about with, um, with an external essay. So there's um, the practical experimental sort of approach. So what was that? So basically that's when you design some kind of experiment um, and you perform the experiment and you then write an external essay, which is basically a very big lab report. Um, the second way of doing it is using theoretical models. So that's more of a database kind of external essay. So you find um, loads of data about a specific thing and you then process that data in an, a unique way, really. And you write your external essay about that. There's also the literature review, which is something that students don't really do in chemistry, but that you can do. Um, so a literature review is where you you prof you extensively analyze existing research, academic, scientific accredited research about a specific topic and write a 4,000 word essay about that. It is recommended, but not mandatory, for you to go with um, the first option, which is the, the experimental practical option. Um, I personally suggest that if you want to do an extended essay in chemistry that you choose to go the practical kind of experiment thing. A database theoretical model approach also could work. In my opinion, a literature review for chemistry is quite challenging and I would not recommend that you go with the whole literature review um, option. Right, that said, um, the next very important thing about an external essay is finding a good topic. And um, I always tell my students, choose something that genuinely interests you. You will be spending a whole lot of time on your external essay, something like 50 hours. I think the IOB recommends something like 50 hours. So you might as well be spending those hours on something that you're generally interested in. So my first suggestion would be to find a topic that generally interests you. Um, make sure that your topic has a very strong chemistry focus if you're choosing to write something, write an external essay in chemistry. So for instance, if you choose a topic um, in biochemistry, for example, um, the, the assessors are going to only, not only look at, but mainly look at the chemistry side of things. So ensure that your, your essay is Predominant, predominantly chemistry, if you choose to write an essay in chemistry. And then the third, the third very important thing is that your essay, your topic, needs to be very focused. And what does that mean? So here's a table that compares broad topics versus focused topic. So a broad topic would be something like study of seawater. And a focused topic would be something very specific about seawater for example the determination of chloride nitrate and calcium iron concentration in seawater so that's something very very specific that then drives um, a very specific experiment so make sure that your topic is very niche um, for a more like database kind of ia a broad topic would be something like theoretical investigation of hydrazine a more focused topic would be something like investigating the possibi possibility of substituting hydrazine for kerosene as a rocket fuel. So here you go. Make sure that your topic is very focused. So 
it's very likely that you start with an idea or you start with a broad topic, but then make sure that you refine it to something that is very, very focused and very, very specific. Okay. So what we're going to do now is go through each criteria and um, we're going to speak about how I'm going to talk about how you can um, get high, high marks on each criteria. Um, one thing to bear in mind is that I made another webinar about the chemistry IA. If you're writing an E in chemistry, I'm assuming that you have written or that you have, you also have to write an IA in chemistry. I suggest that you watch this video, the video of this webinar first, because I go through how to write a, a good research question and also how to write a good conclusion. And it's exactly the same thing for the exam essay. So I suggest that you take a look at this webinar as well. So criteria A, focus and method. Okay, so how do you score high marks on this criteria? The first thing is that you need to make extensive reference to existing literature about your topic. And um, so your, your background information has to be a lot more profound than the background information or introduction that you would write for an IA. So be sure to make loads of references to, ex to existing literature. And this really shows that you know your topic and that you've actually done a lot of research about it. The second important thing is the method. So for an external essay, you need to thoroughly explain and rational, rationalize the method that you are using. And um, so you need to really know and explain the chemistry behind the method and why you are choosing this method. So the back, again, the background information has to be a lot more extensive than for an IA. For an IA, you don't need to, to, you don't need to go into a lot of details about the chemistry behind the method, but you do have to do that for an external essay. Also mention if you came up with the method and why and how you came up with the method and why this method should be used. And um, mention if you did not come up with the method and you, you found the method somewhere, which is most likely going to be the case, um, did you make any changes to the method that you found from the X, Y textbook or scientific paper? And why did you make those changes? How do those changes help you in your specific um, investigation? Um, if you're doing a database IA, so if you're gonna analyze secondary data, um, you need to sort of devise your own method to analyze the secondary data. So what calculations are you gonna do? What, what process are you gonna follow to um, analyze the secondary data and make sure that you explain your process thoroughly. And in your explanation, again, mention any theories behind your behind them, the method that you use to analyze your data and any assumptions that you have made or that is made. So next criteria is knowledge and understanding. Again, it is required that you have a very extensive background information that covers the chemistry behind the methodology, of course, like I just spoke about, but also the chemistry behind the research question. So you need to really show that you understand, you understand the topic and you understand the chemistry behind the topic. You also need some explanation behind any techniques that you're using, for example, I don't know, a titration and, um, and some, some chemistry explanation about any apparatus that you're using as well. The next point is very important. You should use appropriate resources for um, when writing your extended essay. What are appropriate resources? Appropriate resources are scientific journals, articles written by um, accredited resources, for example, the Royal Society of Chemistry, the, I don't know, the Journal of Chemical Physical Sciences, things like that, accredited journals from scientific reviews. Um, you can find those on Google Scholars, it's a good place to start. 
if your school has access to JSTOR, that's also a very good platform to find um, scientific papers. Um, and another really good platform is freefullpdf.com. It's really good and highly underrated. Um, also remember to reference everything properly and appropriately. So your school will decide on the type of referencing that you will use. It could be ABA, Harvard, whatever, but make sure that it is uniform so that you're using the correct referencing style and only one referencing style all throughout your essay. So that's one important thing. The next thing to remember is to use the right terminologies and nomenclature. So for example, make sure that your equations are balanced and that, <clears throat> for example, if you're writing something like methane, which is which has the formula CH4, that the four is underscored and it's just not a four. Um, things like that, if you're drawing mechanisms and all that stuff, make sure that it's the correct chemistry way of doing it. Right. So next criteria is critical thinking. Um, so always, always, always link back to your research question. So ensure that everything is relevant to your research question and that there's always a strong relation to your research questions. Research question, sorry. Um, any arguments that you make should be supported by either appropriate resources or your method. So you can't just claim something. If you claim something, it has to be supported either by the results that you obtain from your method or from some kind of accredited scientific resource. Um, analyze and present your data clearly. That's quite important as well. Um, any sort of mathematical transformation has to be properly explained and justified and just represented clearly. Any statistical analysis that you choose to do, mention why you're using this particular test and what the test is actually telling you. Um, any tables and graphs should, um, should only be for process data. That's quite important and only inclu include tables and graphs if they improve communication and make sure that you're using the right types of graph depending on the type of data that you're showing and that your graph reflects the key elements of um, your analysis. So the something else which is quite important is, I'm just gonna move myself, there we go. Um, assess the extent to which your research question was answered. You don't need to fully answer your research question, but do like do mention any um, unresolved questions and make suggestions for further investigation. That's very important. Also talk about the strengths and weaknesses of your study and your approaches. Um, try to include at least, I usually tell my students, five strengths and five weaknesses and how you can remediate to the weaknesses of your study. Um, don't forget to calculate any uncertainty. Calculating uncertainty is something that you should be covering in chapter 11 and evaluate those uncertainty. Speak about whether they are making, they are causing significant impact on your study that then challenges the relevance and the reliability of your findings. Right. So the next, okay, next criteria, criteria D, I think is quite easy to score marks on. Um, make sure that your extended essay is obviously divided in proper sections and that those sections are numbered. Only use um, relevant charts, images, and tables that are relevant to the research question or that supports any argument that you're making. Um, only include process data in the body of your essay of your essay so any like big table of raw data is best included in the appendices if your method is too long then you can summarize it and include the big part in the in the method sorry in the appendix but make sure that you have 
all the important parts in um, in your in the body of your essay. And by important parts, um, this anything that could contribute to the evaluation of your of your of your method has to be in the main body of your essay because um, the examiners they don't have to look at the appendix like they don't have to if they don't want to so um, include anything important in the body of the essay it's also good to have any kind of sample calculation so for example if you're calculating the concentration of something from a titration for instance um, it's good to show one sample calculation for example for the first sample of something um, you you just give how you calculated the final value and everything else should be given in a nice table format right and obviously include your your essay should include a title page a table of content page numbers and a bibliography so that's again i personally think that this criteria is quite easy to score on so try to score as highly as you can on criteria D. Okay, so the next criteria is engagement. Um, so for engagement, ensure that you complete all of your reflections, so the RPBF forms. Talk about how you arrived to your topic. So, you know, how did you come up with that? Talk about all, I don't know, important decisions that you have made, for example, if you chose a specific me methodology instead of another one. Um, to also speak about any changes that you make, for example, if you make changes to a method or if something did not work in the lab and in the lab you decided, okay, so instead of adding five centimeter cube of potassium manganate, I'm gonna add nine centimeter cube of potassium manganate, things like that. And always be self-critical and um, speak about how you if you would have done things differently if you were to redo the experiment would you have done certain things um differently include any questions that emerge at the end and what what you would have done differently and also be sure to meet with your supervisor regularly because um they contribute to the mark for um this criteria so that's that for the external essay I just wanted to add something, a little something on how doing the extended essay is very helpful um, for the future. So um, at university, you will most likely be expected to conduct uh, research and to write academic papers. So if you've done an extended essay, it's, it, you already know how to, the academic writing style is something that you're already familiar with. So that's a really big advantage. You also already, you're also like already familiar with the whole referencing system, which is something very big at university. So that's also a huge, a huge advantage. Um, writing such a big piece of coursework at your age um, also helps develop good time management skills. So for example, if you know that your first deadline is I don't know when. So you can, you, you put little deadlines for yourself. You know how to manage a big piece of coursework. So when you go to university, if you choose to go to university, um, any sort of big assignment becomes a, le a lot less scarier when you have done something similar before. So that's that. Um, thank you very much for your attention. And yeah, I'll see you next time.